When the science strange in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Me, apparently. How do you catch a ghost? Well, if the Ghostbusters are anything to go by, you do it with a famous proton pack. This portable particle accelerator is surprisingly one of the most plausible technologies in these movies, aside from the ghost catching part, and you could probably build your own if you had a working knowledge of physics and a couple hundred grand sitting around. What kind of particle accelerator powers the proton pack? Well, here's where we run into our first problem. Though the proton pack is commonly referred to as a cyclotron, in the new film, the proton pack is also referred to as a synchrotron. But we can start with the cyclotron because one leads to the other. In 1932, American nuclear scientist Ernest O. Lawrence invented the cyclotron, which was the world's first circular particle accelerator. He won the Nobel Prize for this invention in 1939. This circular design allowed Lawrence to accelerate particles like protons and electrons up to much higher speeds than ever before, allowing the rest of the world to do even more awesomer science. That's the technical term. I'm the static magnetic field master. Are you the alternating voltage keeper? You'll, you'll get that in a second. Here's what Lawrence actually came up with. Two hollow D-shaped pieces of metal, which he called Ds, which would be separated by a gap in the center and connected to an oscillating electrical current. This would be all inside a larger metal device that is bounded on the top and the bottom by large electromagnets providing a static magnetic field. There'd also be an outlet for accelerated particles and an inlet for the particles to be accelerated themselves right in the center. Now, as to how it actually works, let's say a particle is inserted right at the center of the Ds. Now, depending on its charge, it will be attracted either to the positive or the negative D, and it will be accelerated towards that side by the electrical current. So let's say it heads towards this D, and once it is inside the D, the magnetic field encourages it to curve its path, heading back towards the other D. Now, once that happens, the electrical current is timed to change so that now, once it heads back across the gap, it is accelerated, and with a higher velocity, it's going to curve by that magnetic field a little bit more and more. And this magnetic field stays static while the electrical charge is oscillating, so every time it crosses that gap, the spiral gets wider and wider and wider until you have a particle that is heading towards the outlet of the device that is going at very, very high speed. All one take. And look, here's an actual beam of protons coming out of a cyclotron, turning the air a faint blue. It's not quite Ghostbusters proton pack, but this is real. What about the more modern synchrotron? Hey, that sounds like the robot that the guys from NSYNC would form. The synchrotron was the next evolution of the cyclotron, and it didn't use alternating electrical currents. It used changing magnetic fields to bend a particle around a ring. Particles would start out in a linear particle accelerator and then would be inserted into the larger ring already at speed. Then they would be accelerated along these straight paths, but their paths would then be bent by large magnets placed around the ring. And by changing the magnetic field strength at these magnets, the particles could be accelerated faster and faster and faster without having to change the electrical field like you did in the cyclotron. This is the precursor to the large particle accelerators that we use today. So where does all this leave the proton pack from Ghostbusters? Well, while both of these accelerators can be scaled up into massive devices, both have versions that could fit on your desk and maybe even your back. The proton part of the proton pack is feasible. And a beam of protons isn't harmless. It reacts quite a lot with normal matter, actually. That's why so-called proton therapy is used to treat some kinds of cancers, and it comes directly from cyclotrons and synchrotrons. Although more study is needed to determine if this therapy is a beneficial procedure on the whole. So we have two very real particle accelerators that with a few technological tweaks could feasibly fit on your back and shoot protons at an object. And if a ghost was negatively charged, then the positively charged protons certainly would interfere with its ability to cause something strange in their neighborhood. I, I don't know, probably? Egon probably has a better answer than I do because 
I ain't afraid of no ghost, but I am afraid of putting an unlicensed particle accelerator on my back. Why? Because science! <laughs> Want more science? Check out my last video on how many people it would take to power the Matrix. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than everyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.